So I've had a bit of a sabbatical. I was getting married and with trying to remain slightly sociable with friends and still being in full-time employment, something had to give and that something was Swaz. But I'm married now, so all is well. Anyhow, enough about me, he came for trains. And today, to start back, I'm looking at five important details which all are very important on any railway and won't take too much to employ on most people's layouts, both in effort and financially. The first one is point operating equipment. There are loads of options out there and depending on your era and location, it will dictate what style to go for. Starting with the simplest, the yard points. A simple lever installed next to the toe of the switch will be sufficient. These are readily available from the likes of dark casting in packs of about five for two pounds. The next option is mechanical equipment. This is probably the most laborious to install as the whole route from the point to the signal box or lever frame has to be modeled. And I'm only part way through doing this task myself and I hate it. I, I semi regret going this far into it. There are a couple of options out there. I'm using the Brass Masters one, but there is also an option from Ratio, but I find Ratio to be a little bit more expensive. Lastly, you have the more modern point operating equipment. I say modern hesitantly, as this style of point machine has become commonplace from the 60s onwards. So basically, British Rail Steam would just be seeing these, but it is for now one of the staples of many modern railways. This is from the Pacram Pico, and it's not very expensive. They're, they're a couple of quid for, for about six, I think. Of course, there are many other types of machines and point operating equipment out there on the rear railway, such as older point machines and hydraulic points, but I'm yet to really find any decent, affordable options for these. Next, speed signs. This is a weird one, as some rail companies didn't have these. For instance, the Great Western Railway very rarely used physical speed signs for permanent speed restrictions. Only in places where it was easier for drivers to lose track of where they were, like on featureless sections of track. On the other hand, the LNER opted to have lots of speed restriction, which resulted in some very precise speed signs cropping up. Say for instance, the eight mile an hour out of King's Cross. Nowadays, all speed limits are posted, both permanent and temporary. For the older sections, on the LNER in this case, you had the familiar stencil signs. However, different to more modern times, these were painted white on a black base. These sorts of signs only started to feature yellow numbers after the heavy snow in 1963, where the white became a lot harder to read. So yellow was rolled out on speed signs and mileposts alike. These signs that I've got here are from Econ and they're an etched brass with a variety of different numbers. You can get some of this style from other companies in both plastic and laser cut wood. However, due to physical, physical constraints on both of these materials, I opted for the brass ones. This set cost six pounds and are superb. In more modern times, the railways have been using reflective circular signs similar to those seen on the roads. There are plenty of options to get these from and even printing your own on paper can prove effective, both aesthetically and very financially. Next, people. Oh gosh, he's harping about people again. Yes, I, I do like my people in trains. Because when people think of trains, they usually think of a passenger train. And what use is a passenger train that's completely empty, running to a completely empty station in a town free from the humanoid infestation? Despite being the dream of Dwight Schrute, there's too many people on this earth. We need a new plague. Who are all these people? It's hardly accurate. You can easily pick up bags of people from eBay for not very much. And whilst the cheap ones will always need repainting, an evening doing this can make a drastic change for how your railway can look. From people standing at the end of platforms, to people in the trains, to people on bridges watching the trains go by, this along with weathering is probably one of my all time biggest tips for railway modeling. It's also one of my biggest bugbears and one of the things that I harp on about the most. Next, back in the early days of the railways, trains were run with time blocks between trains. 
and after a number of pretty horrific crashes, this was realised to not be the best practice, as horrific train crashes lead to negative public feedback and that is less than ideal. So signals were introduced across the board, which made things quite a lot safer. Signals can add an extra dimension to the railway and even on their own are quite attractive. Now I'll say now, I am not going to go into enough detail in this video for anyone to get enough knowledge to accurately and authentically signal a layout, as that subject is absolutely freaking massive. And there are loads of books which will explain it better and in more depth than I could ever manage or dream of. So I just recommend you to find a good signaling book to help you learn the difference from your home starter to your home distant and your splitting distant. Lastly, a nice simple one, but one frequently omitted, is station name boards. A small detail that is absolutely paramount for all layouts, with the exception to, you know, like wartime layouts. There are lots of options out there, from the basic kits from Dapol to custom made ones, home printed ones, or the etched brass ones from Smiths, which cost a fortune, but they do look very nice. So come on guys, just tell your, tell your passengers where they are. So there we have it. That's my five more little important details, which I think should definitely not be omitted on anyone's railway. They're great little evening, evening fillers for during this quarantine. Thanks for watching. Click like and subscribe, and if you really feel that way, comment as well. Leave, leave nice words for me, because I like nice words. Nice words are nice.